So Israel was acting with restraint when it shot 2,771 people yesterday. 60 people dead. 60 dead in one day. 2,771 wounded. Seven of them children amongst the dead. The little baby girl who will live in the minds of anyone who has seen her picture forever, has just been buried in the last hour or two. She was gassed to death in the tent in which she and her mother and aunts were hiding. Of those wounded, 1,360 were hit by live fire. 400 were hit by shrapnel, 980 were hospitalized due to gas inhalation. 100 Palestinians have been killed since the start of these protests six weeks ago, 60 of them yesterday. The dramatic events of yesterday are reverberating still. Several people have been killed again today, at least two perhaps five. The diplomatic fallout is now beginning to pick up pace. South Africa and Turkey did, as we said last night, withdraw their ambassadors from Tel Aviv, not Jerusalem, only Donald Trump has moved his country's embassy to occupied Jerusalem. In retaliation, Israel has expelled the Turkish consul in Jerusalem. There'll be more, much more to play on that front, I can assure you. The tectonic plates in the Middle East have begun to shift. Many things will never look the same again after yesterday. The international community, we often hear it prayed in aid, has, with one exception, the United States, spoken in concert, denouncing the vastly, vastly disproportionate use of live fire into unarmed crowds who were many hundreds of meters away from the fence, a fence unilaterally placed there by Israel to imprison two million Palestinian citizens in Gaza. No entrances, no exits. Fish to be shot in a battle, and they were shot in virtually unprecedented numbers in one day just yesterday. The uh, Rupert Colville, the United Nations Human Rights Chief, has denounced in a very measured English way this vastly disproportionate use. He said it was unlawful. It is unlawful to shoot people dead when they're hundreds of meters away from what you say is your border. And all the governments, including our own, have some in a mealy-mouthed way, others more strongly, have denounced the action yesterday. France, little dancing boy Macron, is going up in my estimation the man who was pulled around the Rose Garden by Donald Trump just a week or two ago like a can-can dancer at the Folie Berger has stood up to be counted. The French government has denounced in withering terms the idiotic, idiotic move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. All European governments have said, if not quite so strongly, much the same thing. Now, of course, the Hasbara, the trolls, the paid or unpaid agents of Israeli propaganda have been out all day blaming Hamas. But it wasn't Hamas that pulled the trigger. It was what they call the most moral army in the world. And the priests and bishops who were on the march yesterday are certainly not members of Hamas. No, the people who were shot down were men 
women and sadly seven children killed yesterday. They were not Hamas. It will not be acceptable anymore to dehumanize people by reference to a political organization. These were people at the end of their tether who have been locked up for more than 50 years, 50 years, in what David Cameron called the biggest open-air prison in the world. Not everyone, of course, takes that view. Laura Loomer is a pro-Trump, pro-Israel, conservative, investigative journalist, and she's there in Jerusalem uh, now, and she'll be talking to us shortly about how it looks from her point of view. Stand by, I assure you, stand by for that. And we'll be talking about the visit to London of the Turkish president, Erdogan, which led to quite a bit of fisticuff in Whitehall today, as significant demonstrations of different kinds were mobilized against him. Kurdish organizations protesting about his ongoing war against the Kurdish people inside his own country and across the border in the north of Syria, protesting about his locking up of unprecedented numbers of journalists, his closing down of Turkish civil society, his rigging of elections. People were protesting for all manner of things. Rather forlornly, President Erdogan asked Theresa May not to just look at the bottom dollar. Isn't that what these events are all about, the bottom dollar? In any case, she's already banked the dollars because Erdogan has been sold $600 million worth of British weapons in the last 18 months. Nice work if you can get it. We'll be looking at facial recognition techniques that are being developed in the securocrat industry and which are causing uproar, not just because of the affront to civil liberties that they can represent, but because of their staggering levels of incompetence. And we'll be talking about the prince over the water. I refer, of course, to the right Miliband, the right-wing Miliband, the former Foreign Secretary Miliband, who's come, don't you know, to save us. Not permanently, you understand. He's flown in from his uh, palatial New York apartment building and his $600,000 a year job as the head of a charity, charity, folks, to tell us that we are going to hell uh, in a handcart with the Brexit negotiations. And there he was. It was like a Slade reunion concert. It was a flashback to the 1970s. Nick Clegg, Nicky Morgan and David Miliband, each with a microphone to themselves. All they needed was the choreographer, Tony Blair, to make an entrance on stage because surely he was and is uh, behind it. I'll be talking to a Labour MP, Chris Williamson, about the chatter amongst the chattering political class that Miliband is coming back. Well, the police are investigating his charity in the United States. Maybe it's a good time for David Miliband to jump ship but if he comes back here, what kind of welcome will he get in the Labour Party? Or does he have a different party in mind? Is he the putative leader-in-waiting of the much-anticipated Centre Party? All of that and much, much more coming up between now and 10 o'clock. 